And thank you very much for staying here for the last presentation of the conference. And as uh, the youngest presenter, youngest speaker of this pre of this uh, uh, conference, I'm going to talk about PDAs as hackers, Swiss Army knives. Uh, there is already there is already a contradiction here. What the heck are we talking about? Just to what we're talking about is that these phones today and these smartphones today are well known to all and uh, widely used. I know that there are a lot of people here having one or two in their pockets. And um, in my opinion, these have two impacts, um, negative impacts on information security. One is, uh, I think, quite clear uh, that uh, the owner has all his data and documents and personal identifications uh, on that phone. And it is then quite easy uh, to obtain them. Either uh, the owner loses uh, the phone or it's stolen or uh, Bluetooth, there is a Bluetooth hacking. But this is not what I would like to talk about. What I'd like to talk about, to the contrary, is to use this phone as a hacking tool, rather. So there is an opportunity. There is an opportunity to um, uh, use this uh, PDA uh, to uh, break into systems. So uh, these uh, systems, these systems can be used um, to develop, but obviously they don't have uh, the full uh, uh, functionality. Like you know, it's like set top boxes. Uh, these are. Uh, uh, systems uh, that are uh, quite narrow in terms of functionalities and are very spe special or specific. And uh, some of them uh, run Windows Mobile and as an OS. And um, however, certain developers, what they did, uh, they uh, uh, scanned levers on, on, on these uh, machines, on these uh, uh, PDAs. Now, how did this happen? Now, first of all, there are quite a lot of Linux developers who would like to devote their lives uh, on using uh, free software. Therefore, they said, here is my handheld, my PDA, uh, which is using this uh, nasty uh, OS of Microsoft. Uh, why don't we put Linux on it? And then this was the first step. Andrew Zabolotny, uh, who um, created Harrett, uh, which is a handheld reverse engineering tool uh, as an acronym. Uh, this is Windows Mobile and Windows CR uh, systems that it can, uh, uh, platforms that it can run upon. Uh, it helps the, de the development uh, working as a Telnet server. So if you uh, uh, connect through a USB, uh, you can actually get all, a lot of information that you need during development, like memory addresses, uh, chip types, and so forth. And this is very important because the whole thing is about uh, uh, the fact that the, uh, the vendor or the manufacturer creates the phone uh, the way they want to create it, therefore two phones might be different. What is even more important in case of Harrett is that it can uh, load in, it can load uh, a, a, a binary uh, picture, kernel, uh, image. Kernel, image in, kernel image into the uh, memory. And uh, why this? This could be uh, a boot sector for, a, for, the, uh, for the phone, uh, throwing out uh, Windows Mobile and living its own life. The first bigger project was the handhelds.org project uh, supported by HP. Uh, this was between 2004 and 2000, 2002 and 2004, uh, including volunteers. HP thought that it would be possible to crack window mobile's rule or supremacy uh, by creating a system that would uh, discard uh, with uh, Windows Mobile at least the supremacy or the uh, monopoly thereof. Therefore, they created this uh, uh, development group uh, for two handhelds. These were HTC Blue Angel and HTC uh, Universal. Uh, the HTC is a Taiwan-based company. And we're going to talk about them uh, later on. Now, how did this uh, continue? I don't want to go to historic uh, depth. Anyway, distributions appeared for specific devices. Um, and, and there were uh, programs here. Um, First, they were just working with one uh, uh, um, uh, device, and then they became uh, general. Um, was the handshake possible? Yes. So once we have the kernel, the Linux kernel, and we can boot in, and then we have all the drivers we need, then 
uh, from then on, it's an ARM architecture. An ARM architecture, it's an embedded system uh, which can be, uh, which can make uh, made this platform to run any systems that uh, no ARM. Now, whatever distributions we do know uh, from the first group which is the device-specific distributions. Uh, Teach Linux is the new, uh, the latest one, which is a special uh, a Debian, an ARM Debian, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which was uh, made for an HD Universal uh, PDA by an Englishman. And uh, this actually uh, has daemon, package manage, packet management, and so forth. Uh, uh, so the Linux support that it would like to ensure here. And there is an even more universal, uh, which is JLime, that's for uh, HDCs. Uh, we are going to HPCs. We are going to talk about that. The Zubuntu, which is uh, uh, Ubuntu for Sharp Zarus uh, devices, Rubuntu, which is the latest uh, HTC ROM uh, R A R M uh, A R M uh, Ubuntu, uh, which is again uh, available for a lot of devices, uh, approximately. Uh, all the uh, HTC uh, devices uh, released in the last two years can support that. But then Android appeared, and I think a lot of people heard about Android, and I think it's worth talking about. So what, what, what the heck is Android exactly? Uh, who are the ones who have Android mobile phones? Good. There are a couple of us here. Is anyone who knows what Android is about and how it works? Okay, let me tell you, that's to be on the safe side. So Android is a uh, op system developed by Google, well, uh, by another company which Google acquired. And then uh, the architecture is the, is the next. We have a Linux kernel, uh, which actually carry that, carries out all the uh, dirty work, uh, like device drivers are there, memory management is there. And in addition to that, you have a Java virtual machine. And the JVM uh, is uh, actually providing you with the user interface and all the applications that you're using. And then the two thing is, uh, is, is actually connected by Google stuff, um, binding device libraries and so forth. Uh, what this is about, this is a binding device, a so-called binding device, which ensures the inter-process communications or promotes inter-process communications. What the point here is, is that the programs can communicate through that. Um, uh, and then you have certain libraries for development purposes. And uh, more or less, that's it. Now, how does this come here? Now. If we have a Linux kernel, then we are uh, we are already in a good position, uh, and 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 then uh, you have the Linux kernel uh, ported down to uh, handhelds. And therefore, a lot of old uh, uh, devices also now run this because they thought that Android is a good thing and it would be good to run on the old uh, machines as well. And then uh, we will just launch the Android upon them, and then. Uh, we can use all of these uh, uh, um, all of these uh, uh, handhelds which are now outdated so this is how android contributed to the fact that linux kernel projects were launched and were successfully completed now what are the devices that we can use uh, for linux i have i divided them into two types one are the the what is the group that was basically not um, um, supporting that um, but they reported to that uh, either as a handheld.org uh, project or because of the Android uh, breakthrough. These are the PDAs and the smartphones, HTC Universal, HTC Kaiser, Touch Pro 2, and a lot of others. Uh, the reason I um, listed these ones is because these are the ones here with me. And also the handheld PCs. Now, handheld PC, that's a very narrow uh, product line. Uh, this was very significant in 2004, late 2004, when the laptop's uh, battery life was not that long. And uh, these are ARM, uh, ARM net, we would now call them netbooks, okay, which provide you services that were not uh, very uh, much um, 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 known by uh, handhelds like USB port, uh, 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 large keyboard. This was for businessmen who could, you know, just take it for them uh, when they are on the ra on the road, and they can uh, they can work, they can write letters, they can browse the internet, and so forth. But then uh, they just died out because there was a major revolution of laptops, and this took over. However, some of them are still here, and this uh, uh, are now uh, can run Linux. And then the official ones, the, one, the ones that were made uh, as such by the manufacturers, 
uh, by the manufacturers. Um, uh, there, uh, the old Sharp Zauru series, uh, which is old, the Nokia internet uh, uh, tablets, uh, so to say, uh, which had the MIMO li Linux, uh, N800, N810, and the new N900, and more devices and novelties are expected because Nokia and Intel uh, just teamed up recently and their uh, objective is uh, to um, uh, have a new Linux based system which is going to be the Migo. Now how this is going to affect hacking we don't know because we don't know the specs yet. Now why should we have Linux on our phone because when when you have Windows Mobile or any of the vendor system uh, which is quite user friendly I know how to use it. Why do I need this whole Linux uh, thing? And then the developer says, well, that's open source, so you can uh, turn your phone into an open source device uh, instead of running Microsoft. Uh, quite often it is faster than Windows Mobile. It makes your, um, uh, it makes your uh, handheld more handy, so to say. And it also makes it possible to run uh, certain applications that were not available earlier at the, under the other upper system. Like you can use your, your phone as a hacking tool. Why should we hack with the help of a mobile phone? What I was motivated by uh, was the Im was Silica. This is a device created by a company, uh, company called Immunity. This is an ARM tablet uh, with a touchpad, uh, sorry, with a touch uh, screen, uh, rather for enterprise users, uh, which is also capable of Wi-Fi hacking, Wi-Fi hacking and also uh, penetration testing capabilities are there. Uh, therefore, this is a quite a good um, tool. But there is a problem here, obviously the price, which is like 3600. Come on, man, you're kidding me. Uh, this, is, this is something that can be um, you know, uh, welded and soldered in China for $10, and then here is $3,600. So there should be something uh, simpler than that. So, and why? Because let's just imagine you go somewhere with your phone in your pocket, which is always with you, and then there is a whole uh, hacker um, um, Swiss Army knife that you can use for anything. I think this can be really handy at certain uh, occasions, and it's also a fun, good fun. Now, let's talk about the devices themselves. First of all, HTC Universal, I'll try to use the camera in such a way that those sitting in the back would also see the device. That's where it's supposed to be. Yeah, VLC. Okay, let me open it. Good. Open it, please. VLC nowadays is quite sort of slow, and it died already uh, three times. This is why we have this delay. Anyway, I'm going to show you uh, during the demo, probably it's going to run. This is HTC Universal. This is an old 2004 device which can run Linux. It is not going to um, uh, be part of the presentation because it's quite unstable. Uh, no development uh, uh, anymore. You can see that there is a full uh, QWERTY um, keyboard which is uh, capable, which is very good for a Linux um, a command entering. And also it's quite handy. I mean, sorry, it's also quite uh, um, 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 small and fits into your, your palm. Then the second, HTC Kaiser, which is a much smaller and much better looking, much more sexy uh, device. However, it's quite thick. It also has a QWERTY uh, keyboard. Um, uh, it's a smaller display, but with 3D, however, and with Wi-Fi and GPS. Now, you're you're watching the uh, networks and then you can also uh, save your GPS coordinates but the Wi-Fi driver here is not working uh, properly so this is what I'm working on now nowadays therefore this is not going to be part of the presentation let me show you the device which actually will be uh, part of the presentation I'm not going to lift it uh, at least I'll try it's this now this is the HPC you can see the HPC features a big uh, keyboard big um, um, a screen and it also has a PCMCIA everyone knows what it is a PCMCIA slot uh, where you can put in your PCMCIA and also a USB host which I never tried on the USB uh, whatever what is however a today's phone uh, to show you something more recent recent is the HTC Touch Pro 
um, uh, this is going to uh, of run raw Ubuntu, and uh, it also has a QWERTY. Um, uh, it has much more RAM, so it's much more user friendly uh, to Linux. And in addition to that, uh, the processor is also a higher power pro processor, a more powerful processor. So Touch Pro 2 and the HPC 900C, these are the ones that are going to be part of the presentation. Let me go where I have to be. So this is what I'm uh, talked about. So live de demo, these are the two devices. I know web cracking, OK. It's not a big deal. However, web cracking with a PDA, come on, huh? That's maybe something. I think that's already uh, uh, an achievement for such a small device. So we are now going to um, uh, crack the uh, web uh, code of a router and then the other one is going to be we will uh, hack into a uh, prey machine uh, and uh, we'll get uh, the uh, victim machine and we will also get the uh, this is going to be by running Metasploit uh, those who were here yesterday know what sort of exploit we're going to use here so these are the two things that we are going to do uh, during the case during the course of the live demo what is with the camera You're on air? Yes. Now that's set. There are two VLCs. Oh, thanks. Now we have the camera picture. Good. Now, this is why you're here, guys. Huh? This is the point of the conference so that you also profit something. OK, let me first show you. Let me sit down. Let's look at the Touch Pro 2. We are going to zoom on that. I will uh, launch the Linux on the other one. Uh, I will let it boot. So the storage card is not a big thing. Uh, I will launch, uh, I'll run one exe, booting Linux. And it started to run Linux. This is how Linux is loading. Now, let me leave it load, um, boot, and let's go to the Mobile Pro 900. The display is not a big deal here, so I don't know what you can see from there. I go from root. Uh, there is a mounting uh, uh, command that I have to do uh, because this kernel is not uh, actually, uh, it, it requires this. Now, I'm mounting it. There is a Wi-Fi card. Uh, inserted. Uh, let me just load the modules. Nothing can be seen. Maybe if the lights would be dimmed, because that's just okay. Let me go to modules, and then this is uh, the Canon 19, and I try to driver C, whatever it is. Yeah, here it is. Now I say Airmon uh, minus NG. NG. Airmon minus NG. And I launch. No, it's it's not, it's not the picture is not better. But anyway, uh, start WLAN WLAN uh, zero on uh, port uh, channel nineteen. A monitor mode uh, allowed and let's just look around what's there uh, channel 11 with WLAN 0 and then uh, there is a couple of Wi-Fi clients um, okay let me s find my own uh, SSID 11 channels so many of us Zero zero zero. Uh, the SSID is this is zero zero four. Two FDCB EB. Now this looks much better. Fake authentication, however, does not work. Therefore, I need a client uh, which is uh, connected. The MAC address of which I'm going to use. 
so that I can start injecting packages into the system. Let me stop this uh, with the Airmon and the, with the, the, the card. And uh, I will just uh, switch uh, uh, the MAC address to the client. WLAN 00 HV, HW, whatever, 018 8B 6589. With this MAC address, now I bring back the Wi Fi card WLAN 011. Arrow dump launch again, and then in SMC I will write. Now let's see where we are right now. Let me open another console, and here every uh, every play minus ng minus three minus g. I will send it to uh, access point with access point Mac. E2 FD CB CB and EB is the end. And WLAN 0. Okay, let me send an IF config so that I will find out my own Mac address. What? Now it is uh, minus H eight forty one. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Now I'm going to uh, cheat here a little bit because I will send. I'm going to ping an address which is not on the network. In order to generate a package, because we don't want a packet, because we don't want to hear, don't want to sit here for uh, another hundred years. Now, those who see, they, it started to inject the RP packet packets, and you can see that data is going up. But uh, an RP request is now injected into the system. Uh, therefore, as a result of which. The access point starts to answer, and uh, this uh, provides us with a lot of uh, un un uh, uh, um, secured um, uh, encoded data, and we would like to use this to find out the web key. It's not a long time, five to ten minutes, and uh, we could wait for that, but because uh, everyone wants to get home uh, uh, within this day, within today, I'll stop this, and I have a capture, which is here, and I'm going to send air crack on it. Uh, minus Z, enter. This will run for about a minute. There are 14,000 um, uh, codes. Uh, there is a statistical analysis, and we've tried to find the key which is the most probable in terms of being the network key. And then with that key, we will try uh, to hook up, I mean, to connect to the uh, uh, the airport, I mean the uh, route of the router, it is here. Now, Metasploit, this is a Metasploit, and I, and obviously it takes some time before it boots, therefore let me, uh, let me uh, launch this so that we'll gain some time. This is loading, and let me start the virtual machine that we uh, want to use as a hacking tool. This is a uh, virtual box um, thing. Okay, this is going to run. Now, Aircrack is still working. It is supposed to find it. Oops. Those who see it, no. I'm sorry. Okay, it's going to be here. Yes. 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. And it's 100% correct. Now, so with this machine, with an ARM machine, it is possible uh, to run air crack and to uh, uh, crack. 
Now, let's say it's a small hotel where there is a Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi, a router, and then they put a web key, and then uh, this software is being run. And let's say this is where they have uh, uh, the guest data. And then with my small phone, I can first track the network, and then I can uh, uh, connect to the network. After connecting to the network, I'll send my Metasploit. So with the Metasploit, I will uh, send an exploit. And with that, I will do whatever I want so that I could dump out all uh, the data of all the guests uh, that are stored in the database. This would be um, uh, the objective. We are now waiting for the Metasploit, which uh, takes time before it uh, uh, launches. Uh, let me see how. Let me see what is with our victim uh, computer. Now, this is up and running. Let me launch services. We will see whether this uh, X server is running. Yes. Let me see the IP address of this computer. Now, those who want to start from one step earlier, you could do it in such a way that you run Nmap on your PDA, because this is possible. I have it installed, but I didn't have the time. And then with Nmap, you can map the whole network. Anyway, this takes time. And it's not as effective as if you did it from a computer. But it is still on such a level that if these computers go uh, develop further for another couple of years uh, with better processors, powerful, more powerful processors and RAM, then it, there will be no difference whether I do the hacking uh, with a laptop, uh, which is visible, or my smartphone, which is uh, uh, invisible, invisible, sorry. And also, And you know, if you're a businessman and you're wearing your suits and tie, and then uh, you just, uh, in, during the break, uh, you just use your uh, phone as a hacking tool uh, to dump out everything, and then you go home, and then you have all the information of everyone uh, at the company you were visiting. Um, so it is. So it is not. It, the, the notion, I mean, it's no longer the stereotype. No longer holds that only the uh, the. The uh, not well, the unwell dressed um, um, person with the uh, laptop is the hacker. Also now, and sorry for that stereotype. Again, let me just uh, narrow this window so that we could see the virtual machine together with this. Although the exploit is not that uh, good, um, but uh, uh, okay, I'm here. So. What I'd like to show you with exploit is uh, is uh, the next use. Let's see what sort of options we have. We have a couple of them. Uh, I should see the options here, but let's wait. Anything. Anyway, it was supposed to write uh, the length that we want to attack and the local host as well, what we are going to um, connect to. Actually, that's approximately the options that I can uh, set here. It's a demo effect, again, so you can laugh because, you know, if it's not working out. And again, it is writing a lot of things. I'm now um, connecting to the network. And then we can see that I will use uh, the key, the key that I just cracked uh, uh, recently. I'm going to use that to log on the network. OK, this is the network manager. We will try to find the network, uh, the network. OK, we have a couple of them. Let's just find the one that is ours, quote unquote.
Okay, we have to ref refresh it again. And then now it's refreshing, yes. Okay. Na, jó, most már látok hálózatokat. Sajnán csak a sajátomnak kéne valahol itt lennie. Anélkül hiába, mert azt projektozok meg. That bit too many networks here, Linksys. Anybody running a fake AP just to know? Nobody is trying to hack me at the moment? Just to clarify this. Okay. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but uh, someone I thought might have tried to, based on the previous presentations. So I. I set meta exploit because it's not finished. Okay, so I uh, set the air host that is 192.168.0 uh, whatever. That is the vector machine. I have to check the local host. I think it's at 113. Oh, there's no local host yet. And still not on the network. If anybody wants to develop on this, then he should try to make this CD manager a bit faster. Okay, I usually get 113 back for the local host. The AP is running, the access point. We cracked that earlier, so it must already be up and running, and it is. Does IW config has an option that allows me to connect to a web access point from the command line without the uh, graphics thing running? I enter the key that I've decrypted. I have to resize the screen to make it show what I want to see. I should be connected at this moment now. 8.0.108, I'm going to ping it. No, no network. Could be that this web cracked killed my access point. That's the reason I'm not seeing what I want to. It should be pretty shitty, to be honest. But you can see the better exploit is running. Uh, I set the payload. Windows slash shell. No, Windows slash me meter predator. Reverse TCP. The beauty of Metasploit is that I can set a uh, uh, payload on the BDA and it will work on any x86 based machine because the whole thing is written in Ruby, which is an interpreter based language and it is. OK, 
Okay, I think I'll have to. I'll, I'll then connect to activity dot open. Activity open. And I'll just connect this computer to the same network as I am in. Then maybe something will happen. I should now have a different IP address. Let's check the bridging. It's bridged to the wireless. Na jó, uh, úgy látom, hogy akkor a demo effekt. Oké, okay, we see Murphy at work here. Uh, the demo effect has hit me, so I don't want to uh, uh, take much more time. Okay, my desk boy started up. You, you've seen that, and you should just believe me when I tell you that this actually does work, and it really does. I. Uh, did this yesterday on the same computer, but whatever, I have three or four slides from my presentation I'd like to show you. So this was a live demo. Everybody have see, has, has have seen it and, and liked it. In the near future, what you can expect is that the HEC Kaiser is wifey driver that is currently being insta unstable. We are working on it. I started porting Ubuntu on it, so Kaiser, which is currently uh, 20 to 30,000 forints worth will be useful for running Ubuntu that fully supports uh, aircrack and Metasploit. So the immunity silica has actually created a competitor that provides uh, uh, similar devices uh, for a lot less money. And as for the later future, we can expect power, um, even more powerful handhelds, providing even more op options. And uh, this presents a source of danger, or will present a source of danger uh, for people who may become targets. This could become re be a reality soon. This is one that I feel my heart, my heart for. So you can ask questions if you want. I'd like to express, uh, thank my friend Manu Molnar who helped me m uh, by by handing the camera, and also to Christopher Eriksson, who created JLime and ported the 2.6.19 kernel expressly for my uh, request. Uh, ported it, uh, uh, ported it, this kernel to 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 to, to my device because I need it for aircrack. And I owe thanks to all developers working on the Robuntu Metasploit, Aircrack, and G Android and H, uh, on HTC projects. 
So, right, now's the time to ask questions. Okay, you all have uh, smartphones. You should have questions. Anybody in the back? Wave, please. Yep. Okay, I wave, but I have no question. <laughs> Okay, I won't give away my uh, presenter t-shirt because this is my first fail and I hope the question will be re repeated because I can't understand a word of it. So the question was if I understood you correctly. whether you can run Android natively on a, com on a device that is not designed to do that. No, okay. I haven't talked about this, but yes, the question was, can we use native Android devices to use, uh, to, to, to hack? Well, I never had an Android com uh, device. I only had devices that uh, ran Android ported. The major problem is the Java uh, system that cannot be really used to, to, to change the kernel. There are terminal emulators that allow you to uh, inject commands to the kernel, but a lot of the uh, tools are missing and cannot be installed mostly. What may make this change is the new Android, the Android 2.2, uh, that will allow you to utilize ha the hardware functionality so programmers can better uh, connect to the device without Android uh, censoring this, and this may bring some changes. But at the moment, there is no possibility for using a native Android device uh, to run these tools. Or Metasploit may uh, has a port that will soon be ready, but Wi-Fi hacking will probably not be running on these devices at the moment. Port scanner that you may run. You may run a port scanner on native Android devices. Anybody else keeping the rest from going home? OK. Thank you for your attention. And that was my presentation.